Back to problem number 31. Problem number 31 says the wheel has a radius of 1.5 meters and it rotates at a uniform speed constant. Velocity or speed should be speed, right? Um, if a point on the rim of the wheel has a centripetal acceleration of 1.2 meters per second, what is the point's tangential speed? All right, so look, we're, we're going to draw a picture for this one because um, it warrants it. So I got a circle, okay, and the radius of the circle is 1.5 meters. And we're going to pick this point right here. Now at that point, it has a centripetal acceleration. What is the direction of the centripetal acceleration? Does anybody know? That way. What's that way? Towards where? Yeah. Towards the... Towards the middle, middle of what? Middle of my board, middle of the yeah. class, middle of the universe? Oh, circle. Circle. Yeah. So it has a centripetal acceleration of 1.2 meters per second. Oh, wait. Did I write those backwards? One, yeah, 1.2 meters per second squared. It wants to know the tangential velocity. In fact, let me write this in a different color. The tangential velocity, V, is what we're really looking for. Okay? Does that make sense? Now, the tan... So, think of like a car and the wheels on the car. We can measure the centripetal acceleration, then we can figure out how fast the car is moving, sort of. Okay? Does that make sense? So if I had a weight on a string and I was whipping this thing around and the centripetal acceleration was 1.2 meters per second squared, if the string were to break, the tangential velocity would be the velocity of the object attached to the string. And it would go in a straight line. Does that make sense? Okay. That's what they want to know. Well, I suppose we should probably figure out if there's some sort of mathematical relationship between the tangential velocity um, and the centripetal acceleration. So what you guys need to remember is that that's the mathematical relationship. Okay? And you say, how do you know that, Mr. Adams? Well, because it's written down on page... 257 in your textbook, and we did it in the notes and all that stuff. Now, I haven't talked about this at all yet, but we said that whenever we solve a physics problem, first thing we do is read the problem, right? Second thing we do is draw a picture. Next, we label what we know, and we figure out what we need to know, and then find an equation. What's the next step? Solve. Do we have what I need to solve? Yeah, I do, because my centripetal acceleration is 1.2 meters per second squared, which is equal to V squared, which we don't know yet. And then what's the radius of the circle? 1.5 meters. So now what do I do to solve? You got it. We're going to multiply by 1.5 meters. Whoops on both sides. And so what's 1.5 times 1.2? Somebody want to tell me? I'll raise your ready, set, go. 1.5 times 1.2? 1.8, right? So this is 1.8. Is that right? Wow, that's weird. Works out that way. Uh, 1.8 meters squared, second squared, is equal to the velocity squared. What do we do next? Take the square root of both sides. Um, what's the square root of 1.8? Yeah, we'll, we'll just round it to like 1.3. Now what happens to my meters squared when I take the square root of it? Just becomes meters, right? And per second, right? Is that a tangential velocity? You bet it is. Is that what the answer in the back of the book is? Yep. Any questions? 